Welcome back to Light the Fuse, the only Mission Impossible podcast that is also a therapeutic avenue for us to work out our daddy issues. Absolutely. Uh, this is Drew Taylor once again joined by Charles Ho. Hello. And we got a little update on the daddy stuff, because <laughs> I know you guys want that. Uh, Lauren Balf, who's a constant listener and... Um, a... I don't know if he listens to the show. Yeah, you're right. I don't know if he listens <laughs> He <laughs> But we talk to him on Twitter sometimes. We talk to him on Twitter. He engages with us occasionally on yes. over social media. We love him. <laughs> and for a brief moment, we... No, he does listen because he was referencing an episode that we were talking about yes. wanting him to adopt us. But I think we tweeted out that episode. So he might have just specifically listened to that episode okay. because we said that it's about Lauren's music. Okay. So we don't know. We're not we sure know. if he listens to every episode. But That's he listened true. to that one. Right. And he said he was going to maybe adopt us. And we were excited because we need some positive reinforcement. We like him being like a creative type. Right. Um, and then, sure enough, just as soon as he was going to make us customary uh, kilts in the in the Balf name, you know? Yeah. He said he, he was re re rescinding the adoption papers. Yeah. And we felt so bad. Then later, so this is the update. Yeah. Later, he said, I'll get back to you in a month. I still have the receipts for the kilts, thankfully. <laughs> so, so he's thinking about it. So you know, hey, put the put the vibes out there for yeah, us to hopefully need... get back in Lauren's good favor. Yes, um, we've just been sitting by the phone waiting for him to call. Right. I don't think he has our number. He, but Queenie does. Yeah, <laughs> she'll she'll call us. His assistant will call us should should any problem arise. But uh, this episode, we're taking a we're doing a little detour into some fun new terrain for us. Yes. Uh, we're talking to Carly Wiesel, who mm -hmm. is a theme park journalist. Um, she writes for Travel and Leisure, mostly, but has a weekly column on sci-fi and is a good friend of mine. And we brought her on the show to talk about the upcoming Paramount Parks in London and South Korea. Yes. So they announced that one is coming to London in, I think, 2024. Right. But she gives us an update. She has the inside scoop on what's going on there. Yeah. And then the one in South Korea, I think, was supposed to open in, like, 2022. But that also seems back. like it's yeah. been pushed back. So she gives us all the all the details on that. Yeah. And we talk about what, what attractions we think will be there. Yeah. And actually, as an update, um, since we talked to Carly, I, I sent, sent it to you. I yes. didn't respond. But there was an artist rendering of the London Park. Yeah. And it had a little, like, you know, it had, like, a there was it was a Godfather-themed restaurant. It was, nice. like, the Corleone Ristorante or something like that. Nice. But then, like, two doors down from it, they had an MI training center. Yeah. And it had a little, a couple of, like, Tom Cruise. It looked like it was him on type on, on the side of the Burj Khalifa. It was like oh, him, I didn't catch it was that. Like him dangling on there. We'll post this on the on the social media, but it was like a pretty cool, pretty cool little thing there. And we also ask you guys to tell us what what you know attractions you want to see at this park, and we will. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I'm showing Drew the picture now. Oh wow! There's a couple of Tom Cruise's hanging off the side of a building here in the, and the MI and, training center. And the old MI from MI three. Yeah. Type treatment. So this is just an artist rendering. We'll post it. That was supposed to be of the London Park, but Carly gives us all the good updates. Yeah, and then we'll be back uh, next week with part two of Carly's interview, which is also great. Yeah. We talk about food and other things. So And get ready now. You'll hear uh, the transition music yes, that, the new, Ke that Kevin wrote for us. The not legally dissimilar <laughs> transition music. Um, and we'll be back at the end of the episode, so come back then. We are joined this week by Carly Wiesel, who is a freelance travel writer. No, don't lead with freelance. That makes me sound like I'm desperate for a job. But aren't you? I'm a theme park journalist. You're a theme park journalist. You write for travel and leisure. I am. Polygon, sci-fi. Uh, Whoever. Movie phone. Movie phone. I wrote one piece for movie phone. Yeah. Um, basically, a lot of online websites for magazines. Anyone whose checks clear quickly, I will write for it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you check clear quickly for movie phone? She has not gotten paid yet. I'm not saying. I'm not saying. Did you bring Carl? Because Drew is yes. the. What is your position exactly? At, at I am phone? a managing editor, executive editor, whatever. For yeah. what it's for what it's worth, I did say I would write the story for free, and then he kindly Said, I was like, "We'll pay you for it." Yeah. But now it turns out that her wish is coming true because she hasn't gotten paid. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> what was the story? Um, I really wanted to visit the new Big Bang Theory set as part of the Warner Brothers tour. 
Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I love a sitcom. So, yeah, you went. Yeah, I you, went. It yeah. Was, it, it was. It was, yeah. I, so the set is part of the store? The so tour. at the end of the oh, Warner the Brothers okay. studio tour, which by the way, not, I, not a, I'm not making money off this, but it's great. You should do it. Yeah, the, I've never done it. It's fantastic. Um, at the end of it, you go to what's kind of a museum and they have the friend set that's where you can like pretend you're in a friend scene and like sit in the couch in the coffee shop at Central Perk or whatever. And then now they added the Big Bang Theory set. Mm. So you can sit on the couch. You can sit in Sheldon's spot. It's very shrunken. But on your iPhone, it looks real. But it, I, I thought you said, that, but that's like the only actual set. That's, yeah, they were yeah. like, we have it all. We have the cafeteria. And the cafeteria was like the corner of the room. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a, a mannequin wearing an outfit. And they're like, see, it's real. I need to do that backlot tour. That's the only backlot I haven't been on. It's the best one. I've never had any meetings there or anything. People well, at Warner Brothers, they don't you like You do me. know if you have a meeting, you can just kind of wander around and no one will stop you. I yeah. do that all the time with Sony and yeah. the other lots. <laughs> it's <laughs> kind of like mosey, go to, the sto- go to the store. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. gone into I the... I've got, got some good stuff at the Fox lot. Ooh. You know, you know, yeah. I've gone to the props place in the oh, Warner Brothers cool. lot and they were like, do you want popcorn? I was like, yeah. So I just walked around and ate popcorn. <laughs> you can act, if you're an employee, you can rent that stuff out like for yourself like on the weekend. Really? Yeah. Like if you're having like a party. Rent what stuff out? Like, have you ever been to the prop... You yeah, have the Warner Brothers. There's no, a no. giant prop. Colin took me, actually. We ah, have a mutual friend. That we did not know about. That we did not know about. Um, he took me, and it's like, like they have all the dummies for like the Agent Smiths from the Matrix sequels. Oh. Like all the, the. I think Patrick Willems was yes, in this he was tour, there, yes, and he just yeah. did a pictures of it on yeah. his, Insta- his Twitter or whatever. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I, I always love going down the back lot where they have like New York City streets. Yeah. It's always fun to just kind of walk through that section. It's yeah. Like, oh, you're in Brooklyn now. Oh, yeah. Like, you take a photo of... and be like, I'm by Coastal now. <laughs> yeah. It's very fun. It's, uh, it's the little things. Yeah. But, but <laughs> in, in addition to, to writing about travel and leisure yes. uh, and Disney parks and things, you love Mission Impossible, but you really love Fallout. Do you love the whole franchise? I love the franchise, but I think my love of it started with MI5. Okay. I don't know where it came from. I was just like, this is a movie I must see immediately in theaters. And so when Fallout, yeah, I mean, Fallout was in my calendar. Like, I was like, I went to a screening that was three days before it opened. I was all in. Right. But so I went into it very amped and then I left fully indoctrinated. Yeah. And now it is my lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. That's, we know yeah, that. Yeah, she lifestyle. actually has some controversial opinions about four, which we, I don't want to get onto on air because I don't want we'll to speak, I, wanna, I don't want to speak poorly of anyone, but she has some. Yeah, I don't want. I want to like you for as long yeah. as, as, yeah. as, long as well, we can. I would say maybe since we started discussing Mission Impossible, because when I found out about this podcast, I was like, oh, my people. <laughs> <laughs> because for months after Fallout came out, all I was doing was screaming into my phone and just demanding everyone I know see it. Right. <laughs> In a way that, like, definitely people were talking behind my back, not sure if I was okay. Right. <laughs> Well, if you should have talked to us, we would have known you were okay. I yeah, know, yeah. but I didn't know you guys then. Yeah. And now I do, and it's great. Yes. But Wait, so, so going back to the road, you said something about Rogue Nation pulled you in. Was yeah. that a trailer or something? Mm. Was it Because we, we, we just did a trailers episode. We did a marketing did episode with Kendra. Oh, yes. And we were looking at all the trailers. There was that great trailer with the Fuji song. The there was the great trailer with the Led Zeppelin, Zeppelin song. Like, Was there something that, about what was it that pulled you uh, in? No offense to all of your music guests you've had on, but it was none of those. <laughs> It was just, I think it was just like summer, air conditioning, my favorite food is popcorn, like why wouldn't I want to see these films? Okay. Uh, Although, was that one, was that a December release? No, that was summer. No, Rogue Nation was July, I want to say. I was just into it and no one asked me a follow-up question, so I just ran with it, but Fallout is really my one true love. Yeah. Yeah. We understand that. That's that's. It's just a perfect movie. It is. (laughs) It is. You get and so you have much. the vinyl. You have the vinyl soundtrack. I have the vinyl you because yeah. you guys. Tw- I'm like really obsessed. You oh. tweeted the link to the vinyl. I bought it immediately. <laughs> I like needed to. Figure and we out found out that that's only one pressing. So be glad that you did. We just talked to Mo from Mondo, and he oh gave us. Oh my god. There's a whole box Look set coming. So there. yeah. Oh, and I am so stupid. The thing was inside of it. Yeah. Oh, you found it. Okay. Yeah. She was at. She was looking for the oh the, the, the plexi extra, disc. The bonus. I kept being like, Drini, get it. It was in there. Okay. It's just like it's, it's in there. <laughs> yeah. I got it. Um, and so today we're going to talk about the theme park possibilities. Yeah, yes. we're going to. You actually did research something world. that we did not do. Well, I am a journalist. Yes. Even though I'm only going to talk about my own opinions. Right. Um, but yeah, I did some research into it, and I realized that I don't trust that they're going to do a good job with this. 
Which okay, so which part? Is this Korea? Or okay, so now we've got the South Korea. Yeah, so let's, let's you can brief us on this because you said okay. you've gotten gotten. There's more information since the initial press release. Yes. So there's a paramount tie-in to two international resorts that are opening, both of which will have amusement slash theme parks TBD. Don't know if they'll be more on the theme or amusement side. Um, the London. You, what, what is that? The difference between oh, theme so and amusement. Oh, so I consider a theme park to be somewhere that has very fleshed out theming in each of the lands. So somewhere like Six Flags, there's not much of a different feeling between the areas that you go. So that's an amusement park. Okay. Whereas something like Disneyland. What do you, wait? What are you saying about the Scream Punk District in uh, Six Flags Magic Mountain, the most well themed area <laughs> of? Anything? Just kidding. Is that a real thing? Oh yeah, that's where scream my favorite. Punk? Co- that's where scream punk. That's where my favorite ride, Twisted Colossus. Oh my god! I okay. So, <laughs> so I've been a theme park reporter for almost five years now, and about two years in, I started to realize that I was like, maybe I should just go for it and be like all roller coasters, just do it all, cover everything. And I started going on very big roller coasters, and my body can't handle it. And oh. so my doctor put me on beta blockers. And was like, I asked around, and people said, if you can't handle these roller coasters, do not go on them. You will pass out. And I'm like, give me the beta blockers. So I took them and went on Twisted Colossus and have never been back there. Really? Yeah. But you got to admit, Twisted Colossus is an amazing roller coaster. I mean, I thought I was dying, but I did have a good time. Yeah. This is a Six Flags. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. Uh, yeah. Which is, so that. that's why I only cover theme, theme parks. parks. Okay. Uh, which is, I feel like it, the park is an attraction in and of itself. Right. Whereas these these Mission Impossible things are going to be more entertainment resorts with attractions. Okay. Entertainment resort being like it's going to be a hotel. So yeah, that's and, what's interesting. And, but will there actually be rides? Or what? Like what, what is... Yes. Okay. So, okay. The first one, which is London Resort, it's going to be in Dartford. It's about 45 minutes outside of London. And it has, I guess, a storied history where Paramount was supposed to be part of it and then backed out, but now is licensing their movies. Okay. Oh, right. So was this when they were own when they owned Cedar the Cedar Point? I believe so. Okay. Do you There's... remember that when Paramount owned all the Cedar Fair parks? Oh, okay. King's Dominion. Katie, you went. King, oh, right. King's was, Dominion. When it, Paramount owned it, right? Didn't you go yeah. on the Top Gun ride? Drew. Yes, that was the first big roller coaster I ever went on. Wow. Drew, Drew is now calling out to his wife, who's in the other room. Yes, who went? Who went to the <laughs> when they owned the yes, Cedar? Our special roller coaster correspondent. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, they owned a bunch of theme parks for I don't know how many years, ten years or something in the eighties. Mm-hmm. That's when there was like an Italian job. There was the Hurler based on Wayne's World. All these things. Right. Well, yeah, you brought this up on the show yeah, before. That's yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. The, I remember you talking there was about Face the, Off. Uh, yeah. yeah. There was anyway. Face Off. Yeah. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. There was a drop rides uh, theme to Drop Zone, that Wesley Snipes movie. Wow. So, yeah, anyway. Wow. Yeah. Uh, well, so for this London resort, which is opening 2024, Korea's 2025, so London will be first. Oh, they pushed it back because Korea's 2022. Yeah, well, f- yeah, they pushed it back. Okay. Uh, but it seems like it's going to be Paramount, BBC Studios, and ITV Studios. So it's Paramount's licensing their stuff. Okay. I don't feel like they're very involved. From what I understand, it just seems like they're going to have, whoever's building it is going to have access to Paramount. Light material? Stuff. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, and so that's do, we, the, do we have any idea what the things are that they're going to do? I mean, they've hinted, they said they're going to do Mission Impossible. In that initial article, they said multiple Mission Impossible attractions. I, there is no, there is no one on this beat. Um, I mean, maybe it's supposed to be me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little overextended with the slow rollout of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge over the past 12 months. But it, it seems like it's, it hasn't even broke ground yet. Okay. So everything isn't, it, nothing is actually happening yet. They're just about to go forward. Right. So anything could change, but they did keep mentioning it, an attraction theme to a quiet place, which seems okay. Okay, strange. <laughs> yeah, but there will be, be like a be another sensor, movie like, by the time that you'll comes like out. walk into an area and have to be super quiet. I get. I mean, like who? That wants- would be a funny thing if it was like a roller coaster, but you couldn't scream. <laughs> <laughs> like not a fun day out with your family no. <laughs> um so yeah that's kind of all of the details about that one there's nothing else it seems like they're getting ready to start but the paramount movie park korea which uh-huh. is the one that i'm putting my money on um it's opening as the second phase of this thing called inspire entertainment resort which is in incheon south korea it's right by the airport which i didn't realize so they're kind of opening this to be like Come to Seoul and stop and ride our Mission Impossible ride. Okay. 
So AK, it'll be easy for all of us to fly in and out yes. to go onto it. But they changed the timeline of it and they have not broken ground yet. They were supposed to in May. So don't know what's happening there. But phase one is hotel, casino, 15,000 seat, sport arena, uh, oh. a Korean cosmetic beauty hub, a convention space, just kind of that. It's like a mini city by the okay. airport. Okay. And then phase two is what we care about, which is the Paramount Park. So that that will is that have... exclusively. So this one is exclusively Paramount. Yes. Stuff. And they're not involved, presumably, but are again licensing. I think out. I think they are involved. Oh, okay. Because any so I looked into a ton of press releases and everything came from Mohegan, which is running the casino stuff. Okay. Because phase two with Paramount like also Mohegan has Sun? yes. Wow. Um, also, I think we're, so. we're from Connecticut. So. Oh. We went to high school in Connecticut together. That's oh. how Drew and I met. Even though he's from Texas originally, and I'm from Nebraska originally, that's yeah. where our paths crossed. Crossed. Yeah. yeah and your so, lives were destined to yeah. wind up at this yes. casino yeah. in yeah. Korea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, well, we get wasn't enough. We got to go to Korea. To yes. Get it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, so yeah. Um, originally, a lot of the quotes on it were. I promise I'll get through this boring stuff very quickly. Um, it no, said this it was is fascinating. Yeah. I, I want to was... know it all. Thank you. This is great. <laughs> it said it was going to be a hundred thousand square meters of high tech rides, which is twenty four acres. Which is not that much. How, no. how big is that compared to, say, Disneyland? So or... Disneyland is estimated around 85. California Adventure is estimated around 72. But Galaxy's Edge, which keep in mind the, the pathways of that are only a portion of it. A lot of it is in the back for the next attraction that's opening. That's 14 acres. And this is going to be how big So it's big about again? two of Galaxy's, galaxies yeah. two Galaxy's yeah. Edges. And is there a Galaxy's Edges opening? This is the Star Wars land we're talking about right yes. now. Yes. Is that opening in Disney World this year yes. as well? August 29th. And is that the same size? Yes. Yeah. Same okay. exact. They, they've they been saying it's 99% identical. Okay. so That one just has two entrances, not three. Yeah. Right. Two Galaxy's Edges mm-hmm. will be the size of this Paramount Park. The entire yes. Paramount Park. Okay. Yeah. And there's a lot of quotes that say it's going to be, uh, I think they said something like, oh. 420 acres, but there's also going to be this casino and an eco-adventure park and some other stuff. Okay. So Paramount is about 24 acres. Okay. That's not not a lot. Yeah. So what kind of Mission Impossible attractions can we fit in here? I mean, I think the stunt show... There's got to be a stunt show. I don't, I don't know. What do you, what do well, you what, think? I mean, what tell would me you what, want? There. What do I... Well, what I'm expecting and what I want are two very different things. Okay. <laughs> Let's well, start with what you're expecting. Yeah. Okay. Tell me what you're expecting. So I, when I sat down to like go through these press releases yesterday, I realized I already know exactly what this ride is going to be just from how many of these rides I've been on. Right. And I mean, Drew, you're, you're pretty well versed right. in parks. So tell me if I'm right or wrong. I'm guessing that you are going to enter and you're going to be recruited by the IMF in the queue. Yep. You will reach a pre-show area where some sort of, depending on... Character involvement, if they can get Luther and Benji holograms to, like, tell you what the mission is. Yeah. Now that you're a member of IMF. Do you think there's any possibility of an animatronic? I mean, I would love that. <laughs> I would love nothing Scuba Luther. More. But it'll probably be, like, because I know I've seen in the video of, like, the new Jurassic World ride. They got uh, Oh, yeah. Chris, we, Chris, we just went on Chris, Yeah, Chris we were just Pratt, there. like, does a video where he's, like, talking to the audience, like, hey, get ready. The, the raptors are around the corner. Or yeah. yeah. So, so they'll... Hopefully, get like Simon Pegg. What or, if this was like the? This was the way that you could get like Maggie Q or somebody back. Oh my Paula god, Paula Patton. Let's get, let's get Maggie my Q favorite and Paula IMF Patton. member, Maggie. I Q. want them in. Let's a movie. get them in the movie. I know, but I'm just saying. This is, the I don't know if I could stand in a room and have her like pull out a remote control and be like, "But it's a beautiful car." Over and over, my life would be made. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm saying but so if they don't make it in the movie, they can be the, in the pre-show. So yeah. you can go get actors to, to, to record oh, that, sure. that same kind of thing, like talking I, to the audience. God, like, I hope so. Like, you know, okay, cool. Because I've seen it both ways. Because sometimes they just have random people. Yeah. And sometimes they can actually get talent. Right. Yeah. I think it just, I mean, it depends on, you guys know movies. I don't. Well, know. I just feel like there's enough, there's enough of a bench that they could pull somebody yeah. in to be. Get, get John, Jonathan Reese Myers. Yeah. The, what's he up to? Oh, see yeah. where the cat is. You know? Maybe that's Last I heard, he was on a jet with like, 55 million weed plants or something and they all got arrested it's a crazy story (laughs) is that true yeah it's some crazy story about he was in a jet with someone who's some sort of heir to something expensive and they were had way too much weed on the plane really yeah all right we should look into this so (laughs) it seems like he's like rich with drugs so i don't know if he. well yeah i think he's had a pretty storied history with substance abuse oh has he yeah anyway but we, not, need, we, we want Declan on this ride. Yeah, we want Declan on this character's name. Okay, so you get recruited. 
Yes, you get recruit. I mean, oh, now I can't stop thinking about a Benji animatronic. Yeah. Just like waving. <laughs> yeah. And then. They be- don't usually do animatronics for normal no. people. Well, they do, no, it's they more do like the, Jack Skellington. Yeah, 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 but they do Jack, you know, they did. Yeah, but Jack they do Sparrow, it when it's worth that, it. That yeah. fits in the, the Pirates of the Caribbean aesthetic, though. Yeah. That's true. I'm just saying, it, the technology is pretty amazing nowadays. Mm. But it costs cost a lot of money. Yeah. So anyway. Oh, so, it. okay, so quote unquote some sort of Benji Luther. Okay. You see them, and then you enter what I'm guessing will be a flying theater, kind of like Soren, but more like um, there's this new ride at Legoland Florida that's based on the Lego movie ride, right. and it's just a new type of flying theater, and you're going to get in there, and it's going to simulate, this is what I'm guessing. I'm guessing it's going to start with fly- jumping out of a plane. Okay. Oh, that'd be awesome. Um, some sort of helicopter something, and then some sort of chase on a road. Right. I don't know how you're going to get between the three. But I feel like there's going to be different aspects of action to it. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, no, we need to get the insert thing here. And then you'll get it. And so, <laughs> yeah. and so the, for people who haven't been on the ride, the Soren ride is like your, your feet are... Yes. You're like suspended up in the air and your feet are dangling. In front and of there's a, a dome, giant like yes. IMAX type screen that's like wrapped around you. Yeah. And they put like smells and things in there. Yes, they do. <laughs> they, they do push in smells. Um, yeah. So yeah, the Soren attraction is, it's a... A three-tier flying attraction with a very, very do- large domed screen. So you feel like you're flying over sites throughout the world. Yeah. And then the Lego Movie one is more of a storyline with a smaller theater, which is why I think it'll be more like that. Because they just built that one and I feel like they could another replicate person it. could hire them to replicate it. Can I, can I express my controversial opinion about Soren? Yeah. That I don't like the new Soren. Oh. Well, the, you know, California's back right now. They brought oh, they, it's yeah. cuz so, the original you gotta version go, you gotta go when the it's original version of Soren was in on in California Adventure and it goes through California. Yes. And they shot it with like IMAX cameras like on film and it goes through and it's all for like the most part practical. Yeah. And yes. then the new one goes through the whole world. Mm-hmm. And there's not that much practical. Yeah, I'm. I'm <laughs> it does in, not feel very practical. I'm an to me. idiot, and I was like, "Wow, how did they time this to get all the animals there?" Yeah, and then someone was like, "Stop talking," because <laughs> all the animals are computer generated. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so there's they, a little bit of that in the, the original, but yeah. yes. Uh, so they introduced Soren around the world because they were opening Shanghai Disneyland. Yeah. And you can't really open being like, how beautiful is California, USA? <laughs> so they changed the videos every, like there and in right. Florida and in China, which I believe. Oh, no. And now they Japan just moved to Tokyo. Yeah. yeah. There was a really bad. I remember in the. So is that back now permanently, the California version? No, it's just, just for a little bit. Temporary. That's another. That's a whole other discussion. Yeah. But there's a. I remember there's a really bad CGI golf ball in the original one. Yeah. And supposedly the guy <laughs> who hits the golf ball, have you heard this? Is no. Michael Eisner. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Michael Eisner, who was former CEO of the yeah. Walt Disney Company. Yes. Oh my god! Um, yeah, we haven't been to the Florida Legoland, but we went to Legoland California, and it was one of the worst uh, experiences of our lives. Oh no! I will never go back there. <laughs> this is—I oh, uh, no. don't know if you can hear Drew's wife in the background. She just said, "I will never go back there." <laughs> Have you ever been? You've been to uh, California. Only to Florida. This oh, okay. Is, this the one in California. Is Land. What is this? It's like in Carlsbad. Oh, here. Yeah, yeah. here, yeah. Anyway, don't go. But Yikes. how was the new ride? Oh, at Legoland Florida? Yeah. Uh, I just wrote a whole story. That's why I'm like, Legoland Florida. The, like, I know all of the exact terms that yeah. are trademarked. Um, right. So they opened a whole Lego movie themed world, and it's really nice. Cool. I think they did a really good job for, it's not that big of a space. But they really made it very themed, and it feels like if you're a kid, and it feels like the movie yeah. kind of came alive. Can they bring? They can bring all the Lego movie stuff in there. Yeah, yeah. What about I, Lego Batman movie? They probably can't bring in. They those haven't. Characters? I think they were focusing more on their own, like the Lego movie. Right. But I did meet Emmett, which was weird because it's a Lego that is the size Giant of an adult. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah. that's creepy. Well, it's yeah. also weird because the mo- second movie didn't do very well. Oh, it didn't. No. I, the, yeah, Lego, the, movie the, the Lego movie know. sequel, right? Because yeah, did Lego, Lego Batman movie do okay? That did okay. Yeah. Ninjago, not so much. Oh, I Charlie, assume... Cha- Charlie, I said Charlie Chaplin? No. Jackie, Jackie Chan. Chan. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh. No. I haven't seen that one yet. I need to watch it. It's not great. So, wow. well, what are you guys hoping this ride is or expecting it to be? So, wait, is I that the that... one and only ride you expect? That's it? Do you think there's yeah. going to be a stunt show? Because we think that there is that is that is like a for sure thing. That really? Be, yes, we think that there is going to be some kind of like the Indiana Jones stunt show at, I love, at Disney World. I love that Indiana Jones stunt show. 
I, I remember it so vividly as a kid. It's still there. I, it's, is it really? Yeah, oh yeah. I have like pictures. I remember taking pictures and had yeah. those. I would like cherished them when I was, I think I was there when I was six years old. And I loved it's it. It's the only yeah. time you're, did, was your father on that trip? My father was on that trip. Last Does your time dad I, come up in every podcast? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's Drew, Drew, somewhere working through. Drew makes sure that, yeah. that my Did, dad. We should talk about Drew's dad sometimes. Oh, there's nothing to talk about. <laughs> Have not seen him in uh, ten years. We we were going back and forth between titles of what to call this podcast: "Light the Fuse" or "Daddy Issues." Yeah, I think <laughs> ended on "Light the Fuse." Yes, yeah. <laughs> Do you, did he have a good time at Disneyland? My dad, I I don't know. Okay, I'll ask him. Ask sometime. him. Yeah, yeah. We still have to get an interview with him. We're trying. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna. That's gonna be. That'll be a Patreon exclusive. <laughs> Oh, I'm so well, glad well, I'm just well, shoving money at you guys every month for that. Wow. Yes, you are. You're one of You're our Patreon, Patreon subscribers. Yeah, I'm not going to come on here and pretend like I listen to it. Come on. <laughs> Thank you so um, much. Yeah. Do you think there's a possibility of doing something Tron or Avatar-like with a motorcycle I just, ride vehicle? I just don't think the budget is there. I'm just assuming. Because oh, whatever this... I, I that really, would make sense. A motorcycle ride yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense for both Rogue Nation but and Fallout. The problem yeah. that I have is that it's very, very hard to replicate speed without actually moving through space. Yeah. And I fear that if they do something where you are driving, like the whole thing is you driving, it's going to feel like you're going nowhere. That's interesting. I never thought about that. So well, like you've the, done the, like the Fast Star. and Furious in Florida. Oh, right? I've done. I've done it all. Oh, God. <laughs> So the Fast and the Furious tech. rides, do they, uh, they don't simulate speed or they try, they try to and they fail? It's, a, it, it's basically a, you're on a bus and you stop and you're inside that tunnel that's in the, in the one here in the back lot tour. Mm. It's really bad. It's, I would argue it's the worst major... I can say this because I don't write exclusively about theme parks, but I would say <laughs> it's the worst major American theme park attraction right now. Which one? <laughs> the, the Fast and Furious. Oh, that, that ride. Okay. I So, at the end of the day, I will say that my opinion on Fast and Furious, I forget the full name Supercharged. of it. Supercharged. Supercharged, yes. Thank you. At uh, Universal Studios Florida. Um, its biggest flaw is that it's a franchise based on going insanely fast and you barely move. Yeah. Okay. So, there's... There's just nothing you can do, right? Because you can't you can't emulate a high stakes car chase when you're right. on a tram bus with sixty people. Whereas then you look at like the Cars Land ride, yes, yeah. like that's at, a great at, example. At California Adventure, they like you're on a car and you're driving through space and that amazing the mountains around you that they have yeah. there. It's just beautiful. It's yeah. really cool. You feel the speed. Yeah, and you're but, actually you can't do it with a with a screen in front of you. Right. No. I yeah. think that it's. I will say. Um, so that ride was brought to Universal Studios Florida from the tram tour in Universal Studios Hollywood, which Drew mentioned. And I think in the tram tour, it works because you're on a tram tour and you have to go on these tiny attractions as part of it. Right. And it's kind of like fun. I, I did that like probably, oh gosh, now it must be like 12. It was when the Back to the Future ride was still there. Oh, yeah. Maybe you saw the that one with was probably the, 12, the, dancing the dancing cars. Car. Yeah, yeah, they had, that's they not had, there they anymore. They had a Fast and the Furious thing where the cars like flip and they almost look like they're going to land and hit you. Oh. And then they stop and they start dancing. This is, this that was, is actually still this was on like, the train. This was like Fast and the Furious when after like the second movie had come yeah. out, and that was it. <laughs> Those cars are still there; they're just walled off, and so you just kind of go by them, but you don't oh, see them. Yeah, they just wall. Okay, so now yeah. you go in a tunnel, and you, which is what Carl yeah. was talking about, I, you see it. The attraction transposing it for a standalone ride, it it doesn't hold up to the franchise. But I will say. That everything they built around it was very nice. Yeah, you feel like you're in a garage. Great. Yeah. You see the characters. Like, um, in what way do you see the characters? What's the guy? Ty, uh, are they Tyrese like, are they in, the, is in there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. What's Ludacris's character? Oh, uh, the uh, Taj. Taj. I think so, this yeah. This isn't a Fast and the Furious podcast, so don't worry. It's okay. okay. Well, well um, so yeah, they did a good job from like... And also they finish, have them like talking to the cast members or what do they call them? Team crew members? What does what Universal call their employees? I think team members. Team members. And it's always, they always make sure to have like a androgynous name, so it's like, "Hey Sandy, tell him what, tell him about the ride," it's because so it's, so it's, it's a be, pre-recorded yeah. thing. Yeah, whoever it is, yeah. be a boy or a girl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. which is, is kind of nice. So yeah, my fear is because this is a very high stakes franchise that putting it in a ride aspect is tough. Yeah, which is why <laughs> I think that there should be an obstacle course for an attraction. Oh, okay. instead of a traditional ride. So in what, what, how would that work? So, um, we're talking they, about uh, California Adventure style obstacle? Oh, right? much better. Okay. Um, so there is a attraction that opened at Shanghai Disneyland, which I'm now blanking on the name of, but it's 
it's basically it. You wear a harness, you strap into a cord, oh, yeah. and you basically kind of do rock climbing challenges through a mountain, and it's amazing. And I feel like if they could replicate like jumping from one building to the other. Mm. Or do like doing different things, like hanging on the side of a train, doing iconic moments oh, from the that, film great, where you're huh? Ethan Hunt and you're clipped in so you're safe would be I amazing. I would love and that. And just yeah. think about the photo possibilities too. Yeah. Oh my God. If you, could, if you could be on the side of the bullet train, yes! yeah, top of the bullet train and have them blow wind and take a picture of you there. Yes. Yeah. Like, can you imagine if oh. one, you're holding onto the bottom of a helicopter and you have to like get your ankle up to get up the side like and fall out? It'd be the best. Yeah. We really need to look into what the uh, like, legality of uh, these parks in Korea and London are because maybe they can get away with more things than well you're you cli- I mean there's stuff like that I mean there's something like that in Mall of America where you're clipped in and you do an obstacle right, course right, right it would just be more stylized yeah, yeah. that's a good idea I love that. I always assumed that it would be something like some kind of motion based maybe not the like Soren Lego example but like more Star Tours Millennium oh. Falcon but but they're never in a like vehicle together, so that would be weird because you do well, have to have some kind BMW of BMW together for briefly. That's true. I will you could say be, that they could be transporting Solomon Lane with with Ethan. We're in oh the back, yeah, we're in the back seat. <laughs> the only thing they need to have is new filmed elements because I think that I think we I think I like Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run more than you, but I think that we both agree that it is missing a like emotional connection because you're just in a this video is, game. This is in the new this is the Star Wars land. Yeah, so I think there has to be some kind of filmed component of one or more of the team members interacting with you to get the throughout em- the ride. So that you have yes. an emotional yes. connection to what So you have an emotional is. connection so you're not just in a I want, spaceship. I mean, I want Tom Cruise in the ride. I know, that would be the big, that's the big question mark. Right. And I would say that it would, next time we have to talk to McCory, we're going to have to ask him if they've talked to him about this. About the ride. Because yeah. they would have yeah. to be filming it while, right. or the story would be that's kind of really, based on yeah. it. Really, we should bring it up. Because they Corey. filmed um, the Guardians ride during the shooting of the second movie. They yeah. took two days. Oh, wow. So yeah. I think that, so if this if this does have film components, it will be during seven and eight filming cycle. Which would work time-wise. Yeah. If these parks aren't coming until 2024 and yeah. 2025. Yeah. Yeah. Loved having Carly on. Yeah. Great she'll episode. Be, she'll be back next week. She'll be back next week. Great energy and uh, some good ideas about, I think we should be whatever the Imagineering equivalent for Paramount Park, London or South Korea. I think we could do that. Right. Easily. Yeah. Um, I would love that. Yeah. It'd be so fun. We need to find somebody who's working on these parks. Yeah. I wonder, I'll, I'll do some digging. So we'll be back next week with that. And please remember to like, subscribe, rate, review. Um, if you want to join our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash light the fuse. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, speaking of Patreon, this episode is brought to you by Jeremy Dillon. And as always, also mixed by Luke Burson. Uh, he's also editing for us as well now. So thank you to Luke for all the work you're doing. Yeah. And uh, I have a little update. Uh, uh, my movie Night Owls is finally on Amazon Prime. Oh, yeah. We should have talked about that in the beginning. We'll do it in the next episode. Yeah. So yeah, I've, I've been talking about that for on this show for like a year that we, the distributor was saying they were going to get it onto Prime, and they finally did. So I don't know if, how that is overseas, but I know in the States, uh, you can watch Night Owls for free now if you're an Amazon Prime subscriber. It's a lot of fun. It's a great movie, and um, you gotta, you're got you working on a new movie that we can, hopefully can talk about in the next couple of months. Yeah, assuming I don't get fired in post. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> on that note... <laughs> I'm going to go console Charles, and we'll be back uh, next week. Thanks again for listening, everyone. And before we go, another mission, should you choose to accept it, please rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. And remember that you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at LightTheFusePod, and email us questions or comments at LightTheFusePodcasts at gmail.com. If you'd like to watch the original Mission Impossible television show, all seven seasons are currently available to stream on Amazon Prime. This message will self-destruct in five seconds.